In 1993, I saw this dream. I saw myself walking with a group of prisoners inside a prison. And there's soldiers above us pointing guns towards us. The soldiers start to shoot and everybody starts to get killed. And I start to cry in the dream. And I woke up next to my wife in tears. And then eight years later, when I'm in Bagram, with soldiers above us pointing guns. I wrote back to my wife and said, the only dream I've ever related to you, this came true. This is Bakram. Good evening, Salaam Alaikum. Uh, my name is Mazen Beg. I am the outreach director for CAGE, an advocacy group that fights against policies of the war on terror. I'm a former prisoner of uh, the United States held at Guantanamo without charge or trial for three years. And I'm very pleased to be speaking to you all here this evening. For me, the, my life's work since my return from Guantanamo has been about advocating for people in such places, people that you don't know about. So there were all these different groups of people, Libyans, Saudis, Europeans, and so forth, that I wanted to know their stories, and I wanted to know how many of these guys could, we, could I do something for? And so I found this organization. I began to engage with it and, and joined, and have never left since. After years of applying for a passport, I now finally have one. I've decided to go back to Afghanistan. Yeah, some people are nervous. Um, you know, my daughter was saying, oh, Baba, are you sure you should want to go? For me, it's, it's, a, it's a very, very, very personal journey. It's a very, um, it, it's something that I have had sleepless nights about since that time till now, and they haven't ended. And in fact, I often say that the experience for me of Guantanamo uh, was not as profound as Bagram was. And not even as, not even as scarring. <coughs> so Bagram's scars are very, very deep, intensely deep. So Cage has been working on this case of Mohammed Rahim directly for at least 10 years, but indirectly on the Guantanamo cases since 2003, uh, with all the, all the prisoners who were held there without charge or trial. So here's this man, this Afghan, held in Guantanamo without charge or trial for coming up to 22 years. And that really underlines my connection to this whole story of Cage and also being connected directly to this story of uh, Mohammed Rahim. So this is Wazir Akbar Khan in uh, Kabul. For me to return here is going to be uh, uh, emotional. The intentions of this trip is to put an, uh, to underline my experience with Afghanistan for the whole story to come full circle.
and to see where the process that changed and impacted my life so dramatically actually began to go back to that place. Kabul's changed beyond recognition. And the Taliban's back. And I don't think anybody could have imagined that. So we came here yesterday, yeah. but I drove past it and I didn't recognize it. Because it is so different. You have a Makan Mojud. Coming back to Afghanistan has been so surreal. It's the same me, the same place, but just 20 odd years later. Kabul mein nahi pehchan saka. Sab kuch और आप भी आएंगे हमारे साथ आपको तो आपको तो है ना हमारे साथ सुभान अल्लाह आ वो अभी तो वो जो पुराना जेल पुराना जेल था वो अभी है वो पूरा उसको उसको देखना जिसमें हम थे हां वो है लेकिन उसमें बहुत कबाड़ वगैरह रखे हैं ठीक है कोई भी जो भी है अगर उस जिस जगह में हम थे हम ढूंढ लेंगे उस ये तो बहुत बड़ा जगह है बकरम हां हां सो अमेरिकन मिलिट्री के साथ काफी मैंने बात की है उनके लॉयर्स वगैरह कुछ उनके सियासत के लोग और ये मुझे उम्मीद है कि वो जितने भी लोग वो रहा कर सकते हैं वो करेंगे नहीं हमें फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यहाँ पर गवर्नमेंट के साथ भी ये बात शेयर करनी पड़ेगी कि इस तरह का अगर है तो हमारा वाल साहब वाहद अफगानिया भाई उनको भी चाहिए कि वो आ जाए क्योंकि अगर हारून रशीद आ गया ان شاء اللہ باذن اللہ جب والد صاحب واپس آئیں گے تو کیا کیسے لگے گا آپ کو اب اب کوئی خیال کیا آپ نے کہ آپ کو فیملی کو کیسے لگے گا ان کی وجود کی یہاں یا ابھی تک وہ تصور سے باہر ہے یہ آپ یقین کریں کہ وہ نکل جائیں گے اور یہ جو آپ نے اپنے دل میں رکھے نا تعمل کہ وہ نکلیں گے تو سوچیں تو اس کا تصور آپ آپ کو کرنا چاہیے So I think this is 
the road I used to live on. I think my last day in this house was when the war, the bombing had begun. The cruise missiles landed on the hill behind. That's this way. We saw the cruise missiles that land, and the windows in my house they cracked from the aftershock. And we got the kids of the neighbors and the women, and we hid in the basement and we covered the windows with mattresses because we thought maybe then one of the strikes will hit here. And then within a day or two, we were out. We left this place. I never cry. I've been filmed for 20 years about the worst abuses. I've never cried in front of a camera or in front of everyone. It's the first time. It's the first time. <sighs> Everything has changed. Except the memory. The memories don't change. Everybody in Afghanistan has a shocking story to tell. But on the rare occasion when we get good news, and good news is somebody's freed after 20 years, that's, that's like a win. If Muhammad Rahim gets released, that's going to be a victory. Hello, James. Hello, Mazen. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Yeah, James, so thank you very much, first of all, for, for doing this. I know we've not spoken directly, but I know about your work in particular in relation to, to Mohammed Rahim. Could you just tell me when was the last time you saw him and how he's doing? So I'm at Guantanamo Bay now, and I uh, saw Rahim yesterday. Um, he was in high spirits. He's a, he's a man who really... Uh, tries to overcome his circumstances uh, and keep a positive outlook no matter what. what. What does he expect, considering all the other Afghans have left Guantanamo? Rahim has been held for over 15 years in Guantanamo without any charges at all, without any opportunity to defend himself or uh, disprove any allegations against him. He still doesn't have any charges against him and no opportunity for a trial. Well, what he does have is an opportunity for a administrative board composed of members of the intelligence community who will assess whether they believe he's a danger to the United States. Um, of course, he knows that other people are being released. He knows that other people have been cleared. He does have hope. The team that we've been able to put together will be able to convince the members of the intelligence community what is obvious to anyone who knows Rahim which is that he poses no danger to the United States. He's not an extremist in any way. He's not a radical. Uh, he's a 57-year-old man with severe health problems uh, who deserves to go home. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. It's, uh, I actually didn't know you were in Guantanamo, um, and you, you just kind of t told me um, off the cuff. So that took me a little bit by surprise, but actually it was a good surprise uh, because you are in the most appropriate place to talk about this subject. Absolutely. And I know...
انت تكلمت مع المسؤول بقرام ولا لا؟ انا كلمته مع المسؤول بقرام نعم قال تعطوا اليوم وبعد بعد غدا يعني خلاص كلمت. فهو منتظر لنا هو منتظر يلا طيب Now that I'm here, many doors have opened up. I believe fate, destiny, has had a lot to do with it. It feels like this was meant to be. Farhad well, told me that when he visited a couple of years ago, he said for two days he couldn't do anything. He was he was uh, incapacitated. I remember I broke down outside my old house, so I can't imagine what I'm going to do here. I can only just wait and see. صدقني حتى الان انا ما اعرف لماذا جابوني هنا ولماذا اخذوني لوكنتر حتى لو سالتهم حتى هم ما يعرفون حتى هم ما يعرفون ما يعرفون قال لي واحد هنا مستدق كان يسال واي يو هير لماذا انت هنا انا قلت انا ما اعرف انت قل لماذا انا هنا اوه ماي جاد ذاتس ات ذاتس باجرام بريزون متأكد هذا؟ أنا متأكد. شوف. أنا في كان مبنى. كان هكذا في 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 جنب هكذا عملوا من 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 خشب ليمشوا حراس. آه. وكان هنا 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 غرف تحقيق فوق هذا. فوق أنت هذا متأكد أخي؟ متأكد هذا هو. تعال هذا جديد هذا بناء جديد. آه. This is what we wanted to see. This is the actual Russian pack. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's this is the full pack. That's the MRE. That's the full Russian pack. I remember this one. Department of Defense. والتواليت هنا آه. صح؟ لا قريب طيب كان سعد وانت كنت في امام سلك آه. قريب سلك كنت تترجم مع دائما تتكلم مع العسكري آه. آه. جيت هنا وعندما وك... فتحوا عيوني انت قلت حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل بعدين ما استطعت قلت كلام ممنوع بعدين حكيت لي والله هكذا سمعت صوت النساء او اولاد وهكذا اهلا خذ يا عدي لا 
Gelirim robayı dikmana bastım. قل لو في زنزانة رقم أول رقم واحد جابوا واحد دلاور تاكسي درايف تاكسي ألفين وثلاثة هذا بعد سنة علقوه هكذا علقوه بالقفص وهذا كيس على رأسي خلى هذا ذل هذا هكذا خمسة أيام ثم بعد ذلك لما فتح الباب بدوا يضرب 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 إلى أن مات I can send messages back to former prisoners I know who were here with me and say I, I walked in this place again and uh, you know the people that did the torture and the abuse they're no longer here they're gone It's just cobwebs. I think there's different ways in which this country can heal. Those who are in power have a far greater onus than anybody else to lead the way. They lead the way by showing and proving that there's no retribution, no vengeance. So now, quite fittingly, we're gonna go and see the last Afghan prisoner who was released last year. And hearing from him will be a, a different perspective because he's spent a huge amount of time in Guantanamo and can tell us what it's like to reintegrate into this society. أنت آخر واحد من خرج من غوانتنامو ما الذي تنصح إذا رجع محمد رحيم إلى أفغانستان أي نصائح تعطيه؟ نحن كنا مرمين في حفرة ما كنا نستطيع متى وكيف نخرج كان وضع وضع يأس إلى آخر درجة يبقى تجارب وعلام هذه الماضي إلى الأبد ولكن نحن إذا استطعنا أو حاولنا أن نقلل من هذه الألام إن شاء الله بفضل سمعت على نفسه المقلل من هذا والله أنصح بما أنصح به نفسي يعني يرجع إن شاء الله هو إنسان يمدم إلى أسرته ويعيش معه معهم يعني وهكذا الحياة إن شاء الله سيمشي للأمام وينسى الماضي أحمد حصل لنا لأنه خلاص هذا كان الماضي والتجارب أمامنا ننزل للأمام وننسى الماضي. أخي هارون جزاك الله خير الله يبارك فيك يكتب لك الأجر ويحفظك ويحفظ عائلتك إن شاء الله وأن يخرج جميع الأخوة الأبرياء من بوانتنا <تصفيق> In the end, to live with anger and bitterness and hatred, it, it eats you up inside. And I can tell you that from personal experience. You have to be able to let go to go forward. The journey was a, a great success, but there's no success until you've achieved the actual thing that you set out for. That is the release, at least of the one prisoner that we've been focusing on. On a personal level, I think, Returning to this place has been, a, it's just a dream. But the background part of it was a nightmare, so it's a nightmare and a dream come together. But I think the dream has overtaken the nightmare. <laughs>